So uh, this next video is made uh, at a time when I'm not exactly sure when we're going to be doing what we're doing in class, but I want to kind of motivate with the problem that we've got to solve. And the problem, let me just zoom in. Um, so this problem right here, and let me just kind of show you if I zoom in. Yep. Zoom in here um, to about 200% view so you can see it. This is the problem that we're going to solve. Either, and I'm not sure they're going to solve it Friday, or whether we're going to do a lab Friday or Thursday, depending on what block you're in, or whether we're going to begin this next week. But what we're going to have you do is actually we're going to have you solve this problem by hand. Um, it's based on problem five, where you have a football launched at a speed, and um, the football, you know, just launched at a speed from the ground, and there's an, and it makes an angle with the ground. And what we're saying is we're going to actually vary this. It starts off as five degrees, this angle right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this angle. Um, from 10 to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. There's like 10 angles here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have you do parts A, B, and C for problem number 5 for all of these angles. And if you do this, the thought you might have is there must be an easier way. Now, some of you are not going to see that easier way, and you're going to have to do all 10 of these. And others of you are going to try to struggle to see that easier way. So I'm kind of throwing the gauntlet down. And I'm saying, all right, for those of you that want this, there is an easy way to solve this problem but it involves some legwork. And what this video does is it's going to get you set up to do that legwork, um, possibly in class. So here's the idea. Now, in the problem, uh, number five in the worksheet, you have like a football at, um, it's like five degree angle and 15 meters per second. You write down all these equations. What I want to do is I want to give you a way to try to generalize this idea. So suppose you have a projectile launched at a velocity v naught at an angle theta. Now, if we were to write down its initial components of velocity, we have v0x and v0y, and v0x is going to be v0 sine theta, and v0y is going to be v0, sorry, have it backwards, um, this will be, do it again, v0x is going to be v0 cos theta, and v0y is going to be v0 sine theta. I'm going to leave these in red because these represent quantities that we know. Here's another quantity that we know. We know g acceleration due to gravity, and although it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this as the letter G in the problem. Now here's my challenge. My challenge is I've got three equations here that I use. I have Y equals one half G, right, times T squared plus, if you look at this, I know what V naught Y is, V naught Y times t plus, now if you look at this, um, y naught, that's my initial y position, that's actually equal to zero. And then I have a second equation which is that when I reach the top of my trajectory, v y squared equals v naught y squared plus two times a times y minus y naught. Now let's plug in what I actually know. I know that vy at the top of my trajectory is going to be 0 equals, and I know what v naught y is, which I'll plug in in a second, v naught y squared plus 2. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one more thing here just to kind of simplify this formula that I'm going to have you do in your derivation. I know, I'm, going to, I'm going to leave this as positive 9.8, what g is equal to, and then I'll put a negative sign out here to remind myself that G points downward, so I'll use that negative sign there. And I'll put a negative sign, actually. So instead of adding this to get the G in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put minus 2 times G times my unknown Y minus my initial position of 0. And then finally, my third formula is VY equals... Um, a t plus v naught y, and actually what this translates to is I have zero because my speed. Of the, remember when I throw something in the air and it's, this v y at the top is zero equals negative g times my unknown time plus v y naught. Okay, now. This T is a letter that I want to isolate. This Y is a letter I want to isolate. So those are the two things I want to isolate. This gives me the max height, and this gives me the time. 
If I can actually come up with a formula for that, then I don't have to plug in 10 numbers. I can just plug it into the formula for each one, program it on my calculator, and get the right answer. So now, there's one more substitution that I recommend that you make. And the substitution actually looks like this. So what we're going to have you do is, um, we're going to say for v0y, I'm going to change this formula here, which I'll call formula 1. And I'll call this formula 2. And this formula 3. I know I've got that backwards. Sorry about that. I'll just deal. So formula 1 is going to look like this. I'm going to write it a little bit. So it's going to say 0 squared equals. Now I'm going to take this and substitute for v0y. So it's going to be v0 squared sine squared theta minus 2g times my unknown y. Okay. So I want to isolate y to get my maximum height. Remember, all my knowns are in red, my unknowns are in black. For number two, uh, for number two, this is this right here, um, this formula right here, I have zero equals negative g times t plus v naught y sine theta. That's what v naught y is. And I want to isolate t. Here's the trick. That'll only be half the hang time, so I'm going to explain that. Um, so that's the first thing. Now, based on these answers here, the next, the last thing you have to do once you get all this y stuff is you also want to solve in the x direction. So in the x direction, we have x equals v naught x t plus x naught. So x is our unknown, and for v naught x, we're going to put v naught cosine theta times the t, um, which you're eventually going to have to solve for. You use them here, plus. Zero. So your goal, if I were to use the video to explain this, is I want you to get me x, y, and t equal to equal to equal to all this. You want to you want to separate the black letters from the red letters. Okay. So you want x equals a bunch of red variables. Here, here, and here. That's the trick. So for those of you that feel comfortable with algebra, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that don't. This is a preview of what you're going to have to do. Um, and you are going to do this. There's no getting out of it. So if you're a little stuck on what it is that we we're talking about, I strongly suggest you watch this video more than once. You're going to come to class. You're doing this. There's no getting out of it. Okay. So this is what physics is. This is what algebra-based physics is. Um, and I'm going to push you to do this. So this is something you're going to have to do um, in class because I need you to memorize these formulas for the test. And if you're just memorizing, you're not going to be able to do it. If you can actually come up with them, you won't need to memorize them. So that's kind of where we're at.